Hank Shaw, as Americans now, we are eating at restaurants more often than we ever have. We're eating more uh, boxed frozen pizza and frozen Chinese dinners and bagged stir fry than we ever have. And you are running headlong in the other direction. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, I'm running headlong in the other direction precisely because so many people are so divorced from the source of their food, no matter what it is, whether it's vegetables, you know, fish or meat. And it, for me, what I want to do is I want to recreate that connection. And little bit by little bit, and whether it's foraging or fishing or hunting, I think uh, it's it, incredibly important for us to restore that connection because I don't think there has ever been a time in human history that we have been so divorced from the natural world and I think that has terribly grave consequences if we lose that connection. You know, we've, I think we all feel like we have less time than we ever had before and that's part of the reason why we're using convenience foods and driving through for, you know, uh, bowls of pasta or whatever. You know, what is it that you get out of living this way? Does it taste better? Is it cheaper? Is it just more satisfying to your soul? It's kind of all of those things. And, and one of the funny things is uh, there, Michael Pollan has uh, just wrote a book called Cooked. And he had this great experiment. So it's him and his, uh, I think he only has one kid and his wife. And they all decided that we're going to do the microwave box dinners. So they each got whatever they wanted, right? And so they went home and they cooked their convenience meal. And they found that in the time it took them for to microwave everything, and then you know you have to eat it once it comes out of the microwave, so it was this disjointed and long process. They realized that they could actually cook a nice meal that all three of them could eat at the table together faster and cheaper than they could by buying the convenience food. So I, I hear you saying we need a bigger microwave. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't microwave, you know frozen chow mein like you can a Stouffer's dinner. I mean, they all are in different times and sometimes you have to take the foil off and all this kind of garbage. But beyond that, the time thing, because you know, to answer the question of time is it doesn't always take less time to eat with convenience foods. But the real thing is, think about if you've ever gone fishing or clamming or, uh, or hunting or, or foraging for berries. What you bring home always tastes better than anything that you'll get at the store. You know, that, that, the classic example is the, you go up to the mountains and you fish for trout, and you catch a trout, maybe at dawn, and then you eat that trout for breakfast with some bacon and, I don't know, hash browns or something. That trout, the flavor of that trout, tastes so much better. And it's not only because of the surroundings that you're in, but it's also because you worked for it. Yeah. And there's something that's, I think, deeply hardwired in us to get that kind of satisfaction from effort you know and it's true in all things pride but too it yeah. is and it's all it's true in all things but very, especially in food because the, everybody says well you can reconnect to nature and not necessarily take anything out of it well maybe i'm not so sure but there is nothing that will motivate you more to go out and really pay attention to the natural world than if you're looking for berries for a pie or fish for dinner or deer for the freezer and we all say we need to spend more time outside. We need to step away from our screens. Uh, what better way to do it than searching for your dinner? Exactly. I mean, you can't get any more free range or organic or natural than, than, than any of that. And I'm not asking people to sort of live off the land and be a mountain man, you know? I mean, it's you know, I, I'm, like I'm no monk, right? What I'm asking people to do is find something. Maybe it's picking wild onions. Maybe it's fishing for trout. Maybe it's hunting elk. Maybe it's anything in between and make it yours. Make it part of whatever your family's tradition is. And make that something that is part of the rhythm of your year. And it will give you a focus to go back to whatever part of the natural world that floats your boat, and you do it over and over and over again, and it becomes part of what makes you you. And I think that connection, even if it's just one thing, is so vital. And that's really what I'm trying to do. There's also, you know, your book, Duck, Duck, Goose, has recipes for uh, wild and store-bought uh, waterfowl. But there's an element of this to using every part. You've got a recipe in here that has little duck hearts skewered on a rosemary <laughs> yep. sprig. I mean, I probably won't ever have so many duck hearts handy that I would do that, but... You kind of have to be a duck hunter for that one. But yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. It's like, I, I just, I had a great, great, great time um, hunting ducks in the southern part of the state 
uh, just yesterday. It was uh, the Big Lake around Elephant Butte, and we had an astoundingly good duck hunt. I mean, I was really shocked at how good the hunting was in the desert, right? You wouldn't think. And I was talking with you know, the guys I was hunting with, and they, they're longtime duck hunters, and they use a lot of different parts of the duck. But, you know, I can just add one little thing to it. And it's just, if you can add one more thing to how you eat often any animal, whether it's making stock with fish bones or, you know, grilling elk liver or whatever, um, you use more of the animal, and I feel that you waste less. And I think Americans just waste too much food, and, and including wild food. And I, and I want to do my bit to convince people to maybe do that a little less. There's an element of responsibility and in, in being respectful of, of the environment and of these plants and animals. Is that? I, for sure, right? Um, you know, because if you, if you break it, you buy it, right? You know, right. you know, you kill that fish, you kill that duck or whatever, or you pull that onion because, you know, picking onions kills the onion, right? And, you know, it's, you can use the greens of the onion in stock or in salad or whatever. You don't just have to use the bulb. You know, you don't just have to use the filet on a fish or the backstrap on a deer. I mean, there's so much more, but it requires a little bit of time and a little bit of foreknowledge to know how to use something that is not easy to cook and make it taste just as good as say, you know, a duck breast or a backstrap or the bulb of the onion, for example. And, and that's what I try to do is provide that information. You were a political reporter for yes. many years before you started uh, writing a blog. I and escaped. <laughs> uh, does it make you happier? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, I loved, loved, loved politics when I was in it, right? But what I loved about it was, you know, the, the essence of interesting, interesting politics to me is all about compromise and debate. You know, the drama of, say, a farm bill, you knew it's going to get passed, but how is it going to get passed? And whose ox is going to get gored? And who's going to win? And who's going to lose? That's really intensely interesting because you get a lot of different points of view that are come together for one thing. That's fallen away in recent years, and it's become people sort of yelling at each other. And that's inherently boring. So I, 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 I regret the, I, I miss the people. I don't miss the game. Thank you, Hank Shaw, for being with us today. Thanks a lot for having me.